All right, first and foremost, happy Labor Day to everybody. I hope you guys all had a good long weekend. This is the Sunday night scan, but it is on Monday night tonight. Uh, this is the first week we've had some volatility in quite some time. Uh, we knew it was close. We've been talking about it the last two weeks on scan. Uh, and, you know, it was just all about preparing and getting ready for things. And um, I think the, the biggest thing to kind of take away is that it doesn't necessarily mean that uh, you know, it's bad and it's, it's pulling back and we're going to go all the way down and, uh, you know, th that the market is, is going to crash. Uh, what the biggest takeaway from this is, in my opinion, is that, you know, it's, it, it's normal. It's normal and it's healthy for uh, the market to pull back because if it continues to go up at a pace that is not normally sustainable, then in the end, it's going to crash uh, extremely hard. So it is good for uh, you know, us to have little pullbacks here and there. Uh, and the fact that it has gone straight up, 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 up with no real correction is what creates these thousand point pullbacks. It's because there isn't a normal market going on. You know, it's just up and up and up and it just never pulls back. So just as you know, we um, as traders, especially myself, uh, who take advantage of these uh, you know, parabolic style moves, I look for stocks that are overextended on the daily. And as the market and tech and everything else gets overextended on the daily, that's when I start to get super interested in it. That's why I was interested in Apple and Tesla and all those other names that literally every single day it was a new high. Um, and it's just not sustainable for the long term. And, you know, once again, not to appear as if I am a bear, uh, I think it's just important to understand that it is healthy for the longevity of this market, the longevity of this move up uh, to continue to pull back and consolidate on the way up. If we go straight up, up, up without that, then as you guys saw, you know, there, there isn't really that much panic. And then when things finally do pull back, that's when panic starts to you know, kick in and we really get that huge unwind. So right now, everybody is trained to buy dips and, and I mean, rightly so, they got paid up. They got paid very, very well. But uh, since the pandemic you know, lows, uh, there has been a lot of money made from traders of all types and other people that don't even know what they're doing. So this was a, a good, healthy pullback. Where we go from here, I don't know. My first thought is that we potentially consolidate for a little bit, remain relatively heavy. Uh, and uh, consolidate for uh, you know maybe a couple weeks anyway, and then start to uh, find out the the next trend. The the sooner that we head higher, I think the more bearish that is. So the sooner that we continue to stay strong, uh, I think that uh, there's going to be another nice pullback to take advantage of. Uh, in the event that we do pull back, consolidate, for example, Apple and Tesla, I think those are good uh, names to kind of watch because I feel like a lot of people. You know, base everything off of those names. Um, so, for example, uh, if Tesla were to consolidate in the 112 to 117 range for a little while, I think that would be healthy for the market. If it goes straight back up to 125, 130s, then I think we are just setting up for another big pullback like we had on Thursday at some point in the near term. Um, again, I think it has to have these these pullbacks, these um, kind of uh, consolidation periods. Uh, that work out everybody and everybody that just had all this newfound money and you know has no idea what they're doing they, they have to be tested and uh, I think we got very retail crowded to the long side with Tesla and Apple after the splits and if you guys watched the video uh, two weeks ago uh, the label was you know what's gonna happen to Apple and Tesla after the split or what is my game plan and I compared it to TDOC and LVGO when they when they did their merger when they combined and if you look at the charts they did the exact same thing basically the split day was the highest day and then there was a reason for the profit taking and what I said on that scan was that I don't expect that that's gonna be the long-term kind of play I don't I don't necessarily think that's the top forever and you know it's all gonna come back in but that is the short term in my opinion top where the peak you know emotion peak euphoria all builds up everybody gets excited um and you know if you actually kind of think about it from a, a non-trader retail perspective i know a lot of people that actually bought 
uh, Apple and Tesla d the day that they split because they can now afford it. It just seems like the right thing to do. What if it goes back to a thousand? What if it goes back to five hundred? Um, and you know, it's only a hundred bucks now, or it's only four hundred bucks now, so it's a good deal. And that is the general consensus of the majority of you know retail traders. So think about that when uh, you are making decisions out there. Uh, you want to be on the right side of the trade. You don't want to be on um, you know the the crowded side of the trade. And when things get out of hand, you saw what happened this week. So uh, let's move right on. Uh, Labor Day. Uh, Labor Day, obviously, we had uh, Monday off. Today is Monday. I'm doing Sunday scan on Monday. So I guess it's a Monday night scan tonight. Um, but uh, we've got an opportunity for uh, a limited amount of people. Uh, as I mentioned in the video on it, uh, we do do uh, limited uh, sales now just because we want everybody to have the same opportunity as everybody else. Uh, so, you know, if we onboard too many people, you know, over the last, since pandemic anyway, everybody's a trader. Uh, so, you know, obviously business for any services is, is or should be, you know, way up. And that's great. But if you want to keep up with the quality, if you want to keep up with the one-on-one -on -one mentorship, the, you know, being able to respond to members and stuff, uh, you need to do it in a, in a manner that, that makes sense for everybody. So for us, we've just decided anytime we do a sale, we're going to limit the amount uh, of uh, new traders that we take on for any given deal. We just did a boot camp with Cody, uh, which was fantastic. We got a lot of great feedback, uh, but we limited the amount of seats just so that he could do that one-on-one -on -one, uh, kind of mentorship with each person rather than be you know overloaded and give people one-word answers and things like that. So uh, for us, it's about quality over quantity we want to make sure that we are keeping up with you know kind of the goodwill or the brand uh that we've created for anybody that comes on board so uh make sure you check out the link in the description uh and we do have some opportunities for labor day as we do every single year uh and if you guys have any questions you know the drill reach out me cam at investors underground or uh anybody uh as part of the iu community uh let me check my notes um Lots of air on NVIDIA, Tesla, etc. So we kind of talked about that. Uh, I just want you guys to look left on those daily charts. So you start to see all these big breakouts that kind of take off and then they started to pull back. And yes, they did you know, come in a little bit, uh, but there is still maybe a, another, I don't know, 10% that things could come in, five or 10% on a lot of different names, which sounds like a lot. But in my opinion, what I would be um, kind of prepared for or hopeful for is you know hopefully they continue to inch a little bit higher but over the short term maybe the next you know two or three months we slowly start to kind of fizzle out a little bit kind of form a new base and then look for you know that next breakout so that's that's the thought for me anyway um there's a lot of money that is coming into the market and if you think about how many people miss this move they are waiting for a day like thursday to kind of get involved so uh, they're going to be eager to be buying the dip and if you've got all this new fresh money that came in and it doesn't base, then you're gonna have all this new, fresh, dip buying uh, money looking for the exits potentially. So um, keep that in mind and uh, you know, stay, stay aware, stay, um, you know, make sure that you, you, you stay with your plan, stay with your risk management and all that kind of stuff. If you went in to buy long-term, then go in and buy long-term. I see a lot of people make mistakes, they buy and then it continues to fade and they sell out and if you think about you know all the people that maybe were, were building a, a portfolio uh pre-pandemic and then they start to you know not think 10 20 30 years out and instead they think about you know two three five weeks out and they bailed at the lows and they missed this huge you know nearly double off the lows so keep that in mind if you went in and you're thinking retirement then stick with your original plan if you bring emotions into the table, then you know that's never good for any any case uh, in the markets. Um, other than that, dips and panic, uh, like we saw this week, or it, that's that's healthy. Um, you know, slow and controlled fade down. You know, that's good. But if there is no panic, if we don't have that huge washout, then you know it's just a matter of time before the next one. You need to really just you know do the rug pull and get everybody else out that's on the fence anybody that's over leveraged you know a lot of times you have leveraged uh, or over leveraged people uh margin selling things like that uh and you also have the emotions that come in uh with that so 
uh, although, you know, like, oh, it's down a thousand points and stuff, that is good. That is good. If it didn't do that, that would be bad. And just like the prior week's video, as I said, it's close. Something, you know, volatility is close. Get prepared. Um, you can kind of just feel it. If you've been trading a while, you know that it's very, very close. And um, so that's what I spent last Sunday scan talking about that, you know, don't step in front of it, but be aware it is close. And the reason I knew that and the reason a lot of people knew that is just because it is not sustainable at the pace that it was going up. That doesn't mean that you're going to time it perfectly, but it means be prepared. Don't step in front. And when it does unwind, don't underestimate it. Plain. Uh, all right, invisible hand is another note that I had. One thing that uh, you can kind of think about uh, if you look at the uh, CODX, uh, ALT, ALT, um, VXRT, NVAX, NVAX, uh, as well as many others, you know, there was a point in time when there was literally no down ticks. You know, every dip continued to get absorbed, absorbed, absorbed. And so, once again, that's not really that healthy. And, you know, now there there's no down ticks everything is just steady 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 down um so keep that in mind and compare it to what you're seeing now in tech and, and everything else so understand that you don't need to be the top you, you know shorting the top you don't need to be um trying to find the bottom when and if things base join the trend when and if things peak join the join the trend if you're always trying to time it perfectly um you know you're going to see just look at codex chart you know how many times did uh, you try to find the top and it didn't break down. Uh, and then when it finally did break down, what did it do? And it hasn't bounced since it started to come back from, I think about 30 bucks down to, you know, under 10. Uh, other than that, um, trying too hard. It's another note. So last week, I think personally, I tried too hard. Uh, I had a, a unbelievable day on, on Apple. We had some really, really good calls in the room. Uh, some great entries, both on the short side, the long side. But you know, I was trying to size in too much, be you know too too aggressive with um, the trade that I knew was probably right. But because of that, I, I started to kind of scalp it versus let it work. I could have used one fifth the size and probably made more. Uh, but either way, it was good. Um, the other thing too to think about is uh, you know bigger picture in this market. Uh, I was talking, I talk a lot about my friend who is, uh, you know, trading well now, uh, but we were talking about you know, trading Roku and Apple and Tesla and understanding you can't just go in and risk 50 cents. You know, you have to risk basically a range. It has to be kind of a, a, a range, a channel that you're willing to, to risk in, and then you scale up as the trade starts to progress. Uh, and if you're not familiar with that, if you're not doing that, then you're going to get um, chopped out. So, um other than that, uh, don't take things off watch after uh, they pull back. So, uh, for example, GSX, Overstock, OSTK, SE, um, there's a bunch of different names like that. But even Tesla, after the first day that it pulled back, everybody's like, ah, I missed it. No, you didn't. There's still a lot of unwind. Everybody's been waiting for that first pullback day. And, you know, if you just take the profit on that first pullback day, you, you're missing out on all the, the potential. So keep that in mind. Uh, and... Uh, Last but not least, Avidity Fitness. Uh, I haven't had any uh, new new faces uh, join, uh, and uh, it's free. Uh, you guys can uh, DM me, DM Zach. I'll I'll include the link. But uh, I would really suggest trying to fit that into your schedule. Uh, it's only thirty minutes, four days a week. Uh, he gives the first four classes uh, free, so you get a, a free week. Give it a shot, see what you think. Uh, but it's going to get your blood throw, uh, throwing. It will get your blood flowing uh, and, uh, you know, it's going to get you in the right mindset, clear mind for, for trading. And I, I, the cool part about it is there's about 20 traders that are doing it right now. Um, and people are starting to see progress in their trading as well um, with a clearer head, clearer mind. So give it a shot. So let's go ahead and uh, get right into uh, scan for this week. It's going to be a short week, so keep that in mind. And um, again, as usual, I have a couple main watches, and then I'm going to be staying familiar with a bunch of other names. I set price alerts uh, and uh, just kind of wait for those those triggers to hit, rather than trying to uh, trade it within this this certain chop period. All right, guys. So let's go right into what we're looking for for tomorrow. 
which is going to be Tuesday instead of Monday this week. So uh, Apple, Apple, I was thinking that it was going to have a pretty strong close on Friday and it did. Uh, I was thinking that it might uh, squeeze everybody out and then start to come into the close. That's exactly what happened. It ended up coming back in a little bit more after hours, which provided another nice opportunity. Uh, however, I wasn't there. I, I went ahead and covered a little bit too early and it ended up uh, you know, coming in after hours, which I would have liked to have happened you know, 345, 350, right into the closing bell, but unfortunately it didn't. Um, so in a perfect world, what I'd be looking for is some type of gap up versus this prior you know, resistance, maybe a 122, 123 type push and then pull back. Otherwise, if it has a week open, I'd be looking kind of left to look for potential support, which would be in that 118.50, 119 level. Consolidate, look for a potential red to green type of opportunity. Again, just like I said in the first part of my scan, I think that it is a, uh, a good thing for it to consolidate for a couple weeks in the you know, teens range, you know, maybe 115, 117, 120, whatever that case may be. But if we continue to go straight up, uh, we are going to have that opportunity again where we're going to, uh, you're going to have a Sunday scan from me that says, hey, uh, we need to get prepared again for volatility. Um, so, in, again, it's not being a bear. It is, you know, being realistic and it is good for things to consolidate for a period of time before picking a trend either going up higher or you know, maybe fading back for a, a couple weeks or even a month before continuation. Um, after all, we have rallied major off the highs. So, next, KCAC was another SPAC that took off. Crazy volume. Uh, I think caught a lot of shorts off guard. Likely going to have a failure to deliver. Uh, borrow for a legitimate um, delivery was was relatively expensive so that's kind of how you know some places still had it easy to borrow but there's a good chance you get a buy-in if you ended up holding uh on a on a trade like that so for me i am looking 22 is sort of my level i want to see it gap down i want to see it under 22 i want to see it fail at 22 for the potential short the only other edge would be some type of gap up parabolic reactive trade for me um other than that uh ccl ccl i consider it you know the same as all the other uh, travel names 1850 is going to be my level uh gap up parabolic type trade would be ideal uh looking to fade it back towards this 1850 level otherwise week opens look use this consolidation level as sort of your guide uh and then potential uh red to green action 1850 i think is going to be a key level we are coming into big resistance on the daily chart which was from that last uh, big breakout when you know everything started to rally the first time around, squeezed out airlines, squeezed out travel stocks, etc. Uh, I like CCL the best. NCLH is another good one uh, that I like to watch uh, versus uh, Royal Caribbean RCL. Uh, as far as airlines, AAL, DAL, UAL, I mean, there's a ton. There's SAVE uh, as well as a few others, but um, the ones that I like to trade uh, are, are these. They're thicker, a lot more volume. You can go in and out with a lot more size. Uh, so that for, for me, that's, that's really my priority. There's nothing uh, worse than getting uh, into a name with a lot of uh, size and just lack of liquidity. That's why I like this type of market with Apple and AMD, because you don't have to worry about these stupid circuit halts that get you on the wrong side of the trade with too much size. Uh, failed follow through. So failed follow through momentum for me. I'm going to be watching SDC, PLM, and uh, DPW. Same situations on all of them. So the first one, um, uh, it's just going to be higher the better. You know, situations like this, I look for that first crack day and then look for it to kind of retest back up towards prior resistance or, or prior support in this case and then fade off. Uh, same thing with PLM. I think a lot of uh, longs are on the wrong side now. So ideally rebounds up towards the 450, 460 level and then unwinds. I don't think it's going to get up that high. Um, so in this case, uh, if it does, I'm going to be really interested. But I think it's going to have a little bit of trouble with that 420. So 420 to 450 would be my goal. Then look for failed follow through momentum. Get involved. I think that this is going to end up in the low threes by the end of the week. It just it might not be a straight line, but I think it ends up there. Um, DPW, uh, same situation. This was a great trade in the room on Friday, shorted pre-market again, looking left. You already have some nice, uh, levels to, to basically watch, uh, 225, 230 range. 
but it was a great trade, great opportunity, nice unwind, no real headaches, started to go sideways. So uh, as you saw in the room, I covered. And the reason why I did is just because I got the meat of the move. I don't need the next 10 cents if it's going to be a risk of maybe 20, 30, 40 cents of the rebound. And that's exactly what it was. So when it does rebound like this, usually you see a gap down the next day because it's kind of squeezed everybody out into the close. Uh, so in a perfect world, I'm looking for a gap up on twos, maybe a little bit higher, look for failed fall through momentum, and then unwind back under 170s. Go, go. First and foremost, stop trying to find the top. This reminds me a lot of Kirk, K-I-R-K, uh, and APPS. Everybody was trying to find the top every single day. All you're gonna do is, is, is short cover, short cover, short cover. That's what everybody's doing. So let it do its thing. And, and even if it's red 50 cents, that's fine. Let it pull back, let it do its thing for a bit. Uh, you're not going to miss the, the dollar or two dollar unwind uh, over trying to find that top. So wait for it. Uh, it's already consolidated for a couple days at this level, so it, it actually can uh, support a, a higher move. You know, you can just draw a line right under these 930s, 950s, now 980s. It is consolidating. It is able to support that breakout, just like I talked about in the market. It's healthy for things to pull back. This one is pulling back along the way. It's not straight up. So keep that in mind. But I am looking for uh, it to fail eventually. And I am looking to, to fade that trend. Momo, Work, and Twitter. I have these ones uh, kind of rapid fire on there. Uh, they, they aren't your normal trades. This one has been, you know, obviously unwinding quite a bit. Uh, but Momo, Work, and Twitter. The reason I have these ones on here is because I want to trade them reactively with the market. So if we start to unwind again, these might be shorts for me. If we start to rally and have good breakouts, these might be you know nice trend joins to me. I think that we can have dollar to two dollars of range in them, which is a great price to be able to capture that, right? It's a you know it's like getting uh, two or three dollars on a twenty dollar stock. That's pretty good range, especially when you have really good uh, volume. So. On Friday, I was looking for other stocks besides AMD and Apple, and I, I kind of just had tunnel vision. And so I'm just looking to add these ones to my arsenal as potential uh, setups and edge and opportunity when the time comes. Uh, the last couple, continuation type patterns, cone, nothing to chase. It's a, a thin name. Uh, but, you know, I've been there, uh, as you guys know, if, if you've been watching, uh, I was there at 16s, um, and it, it doubled that, that first week, there, or that second week. Uh, and then I just kind of reinvested uh, into the pullback and letting it, uh, letting it work from here. Um, so other than that, we've got SHLO. SHLO is one of those where I feel like everybody is on the same page, shouldn't be here. And when that happens and the price holds, that's when we start to get those nice squeezes, gap up, parabolic, circuit, circuit, circuit type opportunities. So I am watching it for that uh, and, and pretty much that, that only. Uh, if it's if it fails in its 70s, 65, 64, 60s, forget it. Um, it's probably going back to where it, it should. Uh, and last but not least, Kodak, uh, CODX. I want to watch these set price alerts. This is the most important thing to set price alerts for because this is how you're going to be able to, to see them. Uh, whereas with, um, you know, you can have tens or 20 of these charts and you look back and you're like, ah, oh, I knew that was going to bounce. But you missed it because you didn't set the price alert. So uh, with situations like this, I like to set the price alerts. That's how I saw VXRT that day uh, that uh, traded the, the rebound. It might not look like much, but that's a dollar fifty move, almost two dollars. It actually had two dollars intraday range back up to the daily VWAP uh, on a four dollar fifty five dollar type stock. That's two dollars a range on a five dollar stock. That's crazy. Um, and that's what I'm looking for on something like CODX. Not to marry, but just be able to take advantage of that day that it bounces. Maybe it's off seven, maybe it's off six, maybe five. We don't know. But when it bounces, it's going to be probably a, a potential $2 trade. If shorts come in, maybe a $3 trade. But there's going to be an opportunity there if you set price alerts, if you keep it on radar. Don't try to find the bottom. Let it bounce. Let it do its 30, 40, 50 cent type move. When you saw me trade VXRT, I didn't try to find the bottom. I just joined the trend on dips with a set risk and then it continued on a dollar and I was able to take advantage of that. So uh, last part of scan, I've got a couple others uh, that you can click through, click the, in the description, click through to the website. Uh, the, that's what I call the staying familiar section. 
basically what I do is I set price alerts so that I don't miss them off of radar. I set them under the IU uh, price alerts. It comes right into the room and says, you know, hey, look at me. Uh, I just hit X price. And that's how uh, I don't lose these things off of radar. And that's how I watch so much. If you try to watch all these charts tomorrow, good luck. Um, that's why you see I only have three main watches. Those are my main focus names. There's likely one of those comes off watch and I add maybe two more from whatever action happens tomorrow. So out of the gate, I am watching two to four names, you know, to react to. Uh, other than that, I am, I'm, I'm hands off waiting for price alerts, waiting for setups to, to kind of hit. So that's that. Uh, and then last but not least, get uh, the winner for this week which is Jason Stevens. Now, Jason Stevens, uh, you get a free month of IU. Just like I said last week, uh, this week was going to be the IU month free. So uh, all you guys got to do is leave a comment, leave your biggest takeaway, give a thumbs up, and uh, you will be automatically entered into a potential t-shirt next week. Uh, we also give away Momo Traders uh, as well as whatever else we come up with the, each and every single week. So I appreciate you guys watching. I appreciate you guys uh, being a little bit more interactive, leaving some type of comment so that I know what your key takeaway is. Um, and, you know, when you guys do do that, it helps me, you know, kind of, uh, you know, teach you things or, or at least uh, review certain things that you felt was uh necessary to uh you know helping you have like an aha moment or something like that so all right guys i'll see you guys in the room tomorrow